Hello everyone. My name is Abhishek and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm here to talk about a very interesting topic that is GitOpsification of cloud infrastructure. So what we'll try to do today is we'll try to add the capabilities of GitOps to building cloud infrastructure. So most of the times we look at GitOps for deploying applications onto the clusters, but uh, the advantage that we get uh, through this is that, you know, whenever you build the cloud infrastructure, uh, there are some issues with tools like Terraform. So we'll uh, try to address these things and we'll also build a very robust uh, solution with which, uh, you know, you can add the capabilities of GitOps as well as whenever somebody makes an unintentional change to your cloud provider, let's say to your EC2 instance or S3 bucket. So we will add a capability of auto healing. That means the system itself can correct any unwanted changes to the cloud infrastructure. So, you know, before we actually go uh, and look at the slides, what I'm interested in showing you is the solution itself. So let's firstly look at the demo and then let's go back and talk about this one so that, you know, you actually understand what we are going to do today. So this is my uh, AWS account and, you know, here I have a user. So if you see here, uh, if, if I go to the IAM and look at the users, so there is one user here, GitOps test user. So what if uh, there is a person, you know, who has access to this and unintentionally they have updated the tags uh, K1, V1. So this is the tag. So what I'll do here is I'll edit the tag and I'll modify this to V4, let's say. Okay. So now uh, this is a very unintentional change and I want my system or my uh, platform that I'm using to build infrastructure to correct this change, right? So let's see if that happens. So let me refresh. And uh, if you see now, K1 is again assigned back to V1. So this is a robust system that I'm a uh, robust uh, ecosystem that I'm talking about. And you know, uh, if you look at how I built this uh, user on AWS, so I just use this Git repository. So let's say, okay, let me increase the font of it. And uh, what I'll do is, I'll show you live. So this is a dummy user that I have. So let me copy this one and let me create a new user in my Git repository. So go to files and uh, let's say, let me call this as I am create dummy user 2.yaml, okay? And uh, okay, my bad here. So, okay, so add new file and uh, what I'll do is create dummy user uh, 2.yaml and I'll place this, let me call this as GitOps user 2, okay? And uh, now let me commit this file onto my Git repository. So once this is committed, I have Argo CD here, which is looking at these changes. Uh, so let me sync this. And once this is synced, okay, uh, so it is out of sync for some uh, obvious reasons. I'll tell you why, but if you see here, two users are created. And now if I go back to my AWS account and uh, if I look at the users section, so there are two users, right? So now I'm using the capabilities of GitOps, that is Argo CD to build infrastructure onto my AWS account. So underlying there is one more important component that I used. We are not using Terraform or CloudFormation templates. I'll talk about that component. Uh, so which blends very well with Argo CD and the uh, concept of this, uh, you know, entire GitOpsification, which I'll talk uh, in the coming slides, but this is the system that I wanted to build. So with which I can add the capabilities of GitOps where all the users or any infrastructure on cloud is created through Git, managed through Git. You can enable pipelines, code reviews, sorry, I mean, uh, not pipelines. You can enable code reviews, auditing, a lot of things from Git. And uh, if something is changed unintentionally from the users on the AWS or any cloud platform account, it is auto healed. So this is the system that, I, that we are going to build today. I'll show you end to end how this is built and uh, uh, all the components that are involved. So now let's quickly jump onto the presentation. So uh, let me take a couple of minutes to explain the problem, why we have uh, tools like Terraform and what are the drawbacks with the tools like Terraform and how our system that we are building today will address the issues with the existing tools. So the problem that we have today is, let's say there is a person, uh, let's call him Habishek. And uh, so Abhishek is a DevOps engineer at noarg.com and he has 
uh, I mean, he is working uh, in a team which actually manages multi-cloud. So there are multiple cloud environments. So he is managing AWS, Azure, as well as Google Cloud, let's assume. So the fundamental problem here is that these cloud providers provide a lot of managed services and these managed services are, you know, they are very huge in number. So now if this user has to, uh, Abhishek has to create resources on all of these cloud providers. So it is very difficult to either go through the UI or CLI because you know, uh, every time you cannot create uh, or manage requests of the individual users. So instead what people usually do is that, uh, whether it's DigitalOcean or IBM Cloud, so they follow uh, some templating style that is provided by the cloud providers. Let's say cloud formation templates or Azure Resource Manager or the Google Deployment Manager. But again, there is a very classic problem here is, uh, in future, if there is a new cloud that is, uh, you know, invented, let's call it AV cloud, and uh, they come up with a new templating language that is AV templating. So I don't want to learn all of these things. So there is a universal tool that is uh, that is widely used, uh, tools like Terraform. There are alternatives to Terraform as well, but now uh, for the purpose of this discussion, let's call Terraform as a uh, solution that is being used in the current system. Uh, so. To manage all of these cloud providers, now what Abhishek has done is instead of you know uh, going across all of these uh, cloud formation templates, resource managers, he has adopted Terraform in the organization, which is quite well and good. But is it the solution that we are looking at? Uh, for me, it's the answer is no. Why? Why I am uh, talking about the new system that we have just seen, and what are those? What are the advantages that we get uh, from the new system over Terraform, right? So if you have worked with Terraform, uh, let's take one minute to understand that if there is a user, right? I took this slide from Geekflare, uh, thanks to them uh, for preparing this uh, wonderful uh, representation. So there is a user and uh, this user uh, creates uh, Terraform configuration files, either through the CI or from the uh, manual uh, submission. So he submits this uh, Terraform configuration files to the Terraform core, right? So Terraform updates this configuration or the uh, resources that they are trying to build to the cloud provider. Now, if we try to understand how Terraform works, there is only one single point of uh, thing that Terraform uh, uses to manage all of its existing state, that is the Terraform state file. So this is where the actual problem starts. So if you're working in a team or if you're working uh, in a larger group, you know, you understand or identify the problems with the state file. So this is a very single point of failure for Terraform. If you leave the single point of failure aside, the way Terraform manages the state is that, uh, you know, whenever it creates something on the cloud providers, it just writes a couple of lines about the creation onto the state file. Now, what if somebody goes ahead and modifies uh, something on the cloud provider, right? Terraform is not so intelligent to identify what are the changes that are made. So the state file is not updated with the manual changes. I know it's not a good practice, but uh, to be honest, this happens in any organization, right? Uh, even though you set a lot of rules, people are always there to go ahead and update uh, manual changes. So if something of this is happened and uh, uh, Terraform is not intelligent to auto heal uh, the cloud provider, so state file is not of much use in this case. So there is no way two way sync, two -way sync. only Terraform can update. Terraform is not uh, intelligent to identify the changes that are uh, manually made. Now this is one problem. The other problem is this state file, right, uh, contains a lot of sensitive information because it is the main file that has everything, uh, whatever it is creating. It has some sensitive information and uh, that is one of the blocker for it to uh, put this entire Terraform thing onto the Terraform state, uh, I mean, onto a Git repository. So users, do not have the capability of uh, version controlling. Uh, I know they can use some remote backends like S3, but again, uh, Git always has advantages over uh, these uh, providers like S3 or any other uh, buckets that uh, these cloud providers provide. So one of the major drawbacks is this, it cannot be stored in Git. Then the other major drawback is that it does not understand the changes that are manually made to the cloud providers, Terraform. So these are two blockers according to me. And uh, apart from that, uh, there is also a classic problem that uh, engin Terraform engineers face that, you know, uh, even if you manage to put this Terraform entire thing, let's say you don't have any sensitive information, you put this information onto a Git repository. But again, uh, whenever you run this uh, Terraform scripts, the infrastructure is created, but who updates the state file, right? 
So no, someone has to manually go ahead and update the state file on the Git repository because uh, the changes are not automatically updated to Git. So there has to be some external entity who has to update this. So these are some classic problems. We will not go into deep uh, because there are uh, many nightmares with Terraform people. Uh, if you just uh, try to understand or Google problems with Terraform, you'll get all of these things. So these are the problems and um, this is the solution that we are going to build. So apart from Argo CD that we have seen, apart from the cloud provider, there is one other component that I am uh, using here that is cross plane, right? So the entire ecosystem is built this way. You have Git, which is holding your uh, cross plane manifest or your uh, infrastructure as code manifest. And then you have Argo CD, which is pulling the changes from uh, your Git repository and submitting onto your Kubernetes or OpenShift cluster. And then you have, uh, you know, cross-plane controller, which is deployed onto Kubernetes cluster or OpenShift cluster, and uh, which is frequently looking for your uh, cross-plane custom resources. Once it sees the cross-plane custom resources, it updates the cloud provider with the resource that it wants to create. So we have seen the live demo as well, how this happens. Now we'll see how to actually build this system, okay? So there are major advantages with uh, cross-plane over Terraform uh, that, you know, uh, although this is not uh, a subject to discussion uh, in this particular presentation or video, but uh, cross-plane is a Kubernetes controller. So it has that auto healing capacity that we initially talked and cross-plane manifest can also be stored in Git. So it is uh, providing or solving the two major blockers with Terraform. But uh, if you uh, say like, okay, then what is a showstopper that we have? Uh, why not everybody is adopting to, the, to this? One is uh, lack of knowledge or lack of information. So people are not much aware of GitOps with infrastructure as code. So mostly GitOps these days is about deploying your applications onto uh, Kubernetes systems or Kubernetes distributions. But uh, many people haven't explored this area. So one is there have to be much blogs written about this and uh, people have to do more videos on this so that uh, there is enough promotion in this field. And the other thing is that uh, there is no proper migration, bet migration between Terraform and uh, Crossplane. Let's say I have a system that I have been uh, building using Terraform over years. Now, if I have to migrate to uh, Crossplane, I need to uh, have a way of migration, which is which does not exist as of today. And Crossplane community is still building. If you compare with uh, Terraform, the community is uh, just building or it's not as good as Terraform. So it will take time. So these are the things uh, are the showstoppers that we have. But I, I feel eventually this would be the system uh, that everybody is going to use because uh, we want a robust solution, right? We don't want uh, people just using Terraform and building uh, infrastructure and then uh, you don't know what are the changes that are being made. You don't want the nightmares with state file or and you want the version control capabilities. So we want an end-to-end -end solution that is here. Right. So this is the end-to-end -end solution that I wanted to promote. Uh, just to uh, show this slide one more time, DevOps engineer submits the cross-plane manifest or infrastructure as code manifest to Git repository. And then Argo CD is pulling this uh, manifest from the Git repository onto your Kubernetes cluster, cross-plane controller who observes and monitors or watches this uh, cross-plane custom resources and deploys the relevant changes onto the cloud provider. Perfect. So now, uh, Building this system is very easy. One is you just have to uh, install Argo CD. So there are multiple ways to install Argo CD. Uh, either you can use Argo CD or GitOps operator and uh, install Argo CD. If you uh, are not aware how to build Argo CD, you can uh, just go to the Argo CD documentation. Uh, and I am simply running uh, Argo CD here. So if you see, this is my Argo CD uh, controller that is running. And then I have Crossplane uh, running. So if you want to build or run Crossplane, just go to the uh, cross-plane docs. Okay, so this is the cross-plane docs. Just come here and uh, go to the install and configure uh, section. So I am currently on Minikube and I've installed a uh, cross-plane on my Minikube. If you see uh, kubectl get pods minus n cross-plane system. So here I have everything on my cluster. Like if you uh, observe, just a second. Yeah, so you see uh, cross-plane deployments as well as my Argo CD deployment. So this is my Argo CD deployment and this is my cross-plane deployment. So I have both of them ready installed. And once I have both of them installed, if you see uh, OC get users, uh, which so this is the users that we have created. And how did we create this? So I have put both of this manifest on the Git repository. Uh, so this is the manifest. 
perfect now if you ask me how do i know about this manifest no it's like classic thing you can either go to the cross plane docs or you know you can simply go to the uh, cross plane github repository uh, just come here github cross plane and uh, go to the provider whatever you want let's say mine is uh, provider aws right so github cross plane provider aws if you come here go to the example section you have all the examples with aws whatever you can do so just search for iam and uh, i'm trying to build users so this is a user.yaml i've taken the example from here and uh, i put it in my git repository rest is done by argo cd so argo cd has deployed onto my kubernetes cluster if you see here so these are the users that are deployed by argo cd and once this is deployed i have my uh, cross plane uh, controller so if you see oc get uh, cross plane or let's call it kubc little bit cross plane so when i do kubectl get cross plane uh, i get all the uh, reconcilers that uh, cross plane has so this is the this, this yeah so yeah this one okay so this is the one uh, the cross plane aws provider which i have installed and this is reconciling the changes and it deploys onto my uh, cloud provider so that's the uh, video that we have uh, for today guys and uh, so this is i mean try try to consider gitops for your infrastructure management as well apart from your uh, regular kubernetes or application deployment uh, this will be very useful when you are uh, you know in a team with large number of audience many people are managing your infrastructure not a single point of uh, contact then you know in such cases Uh, trust me uh, it will be very difficult uh, if you uh, manage everything with a system that does not have version controlling like terraform or a system that does not have auto healing capabilities so uh, build a robust system i hope you like this video and uh, if you want more details on how to you know uh, going at how to how do you deploy and how do you configure i I'm, i showed it but if you want in detail on uh, how each and every component is installed and configured uh, please let me know in the comment section i can uh, do a video where i'll show you how to install argo cd how to install cross plane how to configure both of them to work together and um, yeah that's the video for to, uh, for today please don't forget to uh, like share uh, subscribe and comment to my channel thanks a lot i'll see you in the next video bye